Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today, I want to continue my discussion of Bill C-21 with a look at the advertising provisions. So what this is, is provisions that, and we'll just jump to the legislation right away. Uh, it says, every person or every person referred to below commits an offense that advertises a firearm in a manner that depicts, counsels, or promotes violence against a person. And that includes a person who's an owner of or partner in the business, if the business is a corporation, a person who's a director or officer of the corporation, and a person who has a relationship with a person referred to in the first two paragraphs, and who has a direct influence on the operations of the business. So that might, for instance, be a spouse. Uh, the punishment is on a first offense, it goes up to two years. On a second or subsequent offense, up to five years. Or they can proceed summarily, which, uh, which means that this has no uh, minimum penalty. Now, the first problem this is going to run into is really a Charter of Rights and Freedoms issue, because this is clearly attempting to limit uh, expression. Now, there are, uh, Section 1 of the Charter allows for reasonable limits on uh, expression, and there is some case law sort of addressing this, uh, primarily in the field of tobacco, because there are various limits that have been put on advertising of tobacco products. However, uh, the courts have said that they don't have free reign to just blanket uh, say that tobacco products can't advertise. Uh, they are allowed to advertise in certain ways, and in certain ways they're not. However, um, this gets into sort of thornier issues, because tobacco, the, uh, the courts have said basically this is a purely harmful thing. Uh, that's not necessarily the case here. And further... Uh, there are some uses of violence, including uses of violence involving firearms, that are lawful. For example, self-defense is lawful. And so a business, for example, that takes a position of saying, you know, this is sort of suitable for self-defense, uh, there's two elements of that. One, it's saying that it's suitable for a lawful purpose. And two, uh, there is inherently some politics around it. Uh, the politics of self-defense have been of national interest. So there can be political positions there involved and enmeshed in this. This is not sort of something that is purely just a buy our stuff thing. Now, these advertisements are fairly rare. It's rare that I see anybody advertising, you know, this is a great self-defense gun or, and I've never seen an advertisement saying that this is a great offensive weapon. Um, typically, firearm advertising in Canada is just, here is a gun, here's the price, here's the features of the gun. Um, I mean, in some cases, not even that. Uh, I saw recently a gun store near me is advertising, we have SKSs back in stock, and here's the price. And that's it. It's just, we have them. Come buy one. Because most of the time, people who are interested in firearms already kind of have some idea of what they want. But when they're listing features, they tend to say, you know, here's the caliber, here's the barrel length, you know, is it restricted or non-restricted? Uh, how much does it weigh? Uh, these kinds of things. So there's not a whole lot of advertisement of firearms in a manner that depicts, counsels, or promotes violence in a person in sort of your standard firearm stores. Cabela's is not doing this. Uh, you know, Wolverine Supply is not doing this. None of these gun stores really are. But we can really sort of get to another issue, which is how little thought must have gone into this. The reason why I say that is because uh, your sort of friendly local gun shop is not the only business that is selling firearms. So, for example, uh, let us say that you are manufacturing rifles and your primary or only market uh, that you are trying to sell to is the Canadian military. You know, you are a gun manufacturer and you really want a contract with the Canadian military. Well, what are you going to tell them? You know, this gun is really good for hugging enemies at a distance. No, you're going to say this is a weapon of war. You know, it's a fully automatic. It's not intended for civilians. It is purely for the military. Um, and probably it's really good at killing people or destroying vehicles that people are occupying. So, you know, that seems like a legitimate thing that a company in that business might want to advertise. Uh, as an example, uh, 
the internet has told me, and I'm not sure if it's accurate because, of course, the internet is the internet, but they've indicated that in the past, SNC-Lavalin has sold mortars. And I'm sure that their advertisement of those mortars wasn't, hey, these things are great ways to deliver t-shirts to the enemy at a distance. It's, no, these things will deliver explosives to the enemy and ruin or end their day. So that's one example. You could also, you know, imagine companies that want to deal with police forces. If you're selling grenade launchers for the purpose of launching tear gas or baton rounds or those kinds of things, you're probably not telling the police, listen, um, this thing fires a baton round for no reason. You're going to want to talk about how effective it is at stopping somebody who might not otherwise be stopped. Um, tasers are, you know, probably considered firearms in Canadian law. I say probably because... There's going to be some interesting legal issues that I might explore in a future video. But again, you know, the whole point of that is that you are using it violently against a person. Um, and probably in situations, hopefully, where there's, you know, grounds to do so. But again, you know, that's a situation where that might happen. Similarly, if you were, for instance, selling a World War I rifle. It might make sense to advertise that in a context that shows how it was used historically. Here are some pictures of, you know, of World War I battles where this rifle was being used. So again, that would depict violence against people. But, you know, that seems to me to be a reasonable advertisement. And in fact, uh, something that is almost certainly uh, or much more likely to be considered protected expression. Uh, the other one that leaps to mind is let us say that you are um, you're selling or loaning uh, or you know you're an armorer and you want to provide firearms to the movie industry and so you want to indicate to the movie industry what firearms you have available for their use uh, because canada has you know a thriving movie industry we're trying to encourage films to be filmed here and you know many good films have been filmed here in canada and so you want them to say and come to your company to get firearms for use in the movie. And so uh, what you might do is, for instance, say these guns were used in this movie. And, you know, here's a still from that video or from that movie that shows this being fired. Well, again, that might depict violence against a person. Now, it's fictional violence and fictional violence of a sort that, you know, our society is entirely fine with. But, you know, that would, another, you know, otherwise be a limit here. They haven't put any exceptions in this. I mean, I would think that you'd want exceptions for, you know, marketing towards the military or marketing towards the police or, you know, marketing towards the film industry. But none of those are in there. So that, to me, suggests that they just really didn't think about this, that they had some sort of scary notion that, you know, uh, gun stores are selling things in scary ways, which... I, I have never really seen. So I don't understand what this provision is for. I guess if this goes through, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, Canadian arms manufacturers get around this when they're trying to market to the police, to the military. Um, maybe there's a distant possibility that we'll see SNC-Lavalin held to account for something. Or maybe not. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I've let me know in the comments below what you think. Please like this video. Please share it with uh, your friends. Please subscribe to see more content. And uh, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Demo, Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta, Canada's National Firearms Association, North Central Process Service, and Kyle Martin. At the $20 level, Cameron Johnson, Dale Nesbitt, and Andrew Elsich, and Sights and Arms Limited, as well as a number of you at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Um... Yeah, I think that this one, I mean, it's not going to affect many of us because most of us aren't running firearm businesses, but uh, it'll it'll make the firearm businesses that you do patronize a little more nervous. And I think that this one just really illustrates uh, how little thought went into this bill. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge and see you next time. There's lots more Bill C-21 to cover, but there's also other stuff that I want to get to soon. Uh, Bill C-22, 
and also stuff uh the peter cahill trial is uh hopefully we'll have a verdict soon uh, all sorts of issues anyway stay tuned